Thank you for plugging into this Family Life News podcast, streaming issues-driven, family-focused news. I'm Greg Gillespie on Family Life, and today we're giving some insights into Clergy Appreciation Month. One of the ways we wanted to do that is talk with one of the regional denominational executives in the Family Life listening area. And Reverend Dr. Sandy Hasenauer has agreed to talk with us. She is the executive minister for the American Baptist Churches, part of the Great Lakes region. Sandy, thank you so much for being with us and welcome to Family Life. Thank you. It's good to be here. Why do we need to appreciate our clergy? Ought to go without saying, but I'd like to delve into it a little bit. Certainly, the month here is important, but year-round, why is it important for members of churches to show that kind of appreciation to their pastors? Well, I think it's it's always good for us to appreciate one another in general ways, but I think right now um, there have some been some fairly alarming studies that have been done in recent months and the last couple of years. Most notably, there was a Barna report that was put out in about 2022, I believe, that talked about pastoral resignations, that we are in a rather unprecedented time, and we've heard that word a lot in the last couple of years, unprecedented, but there are a lot of clergy leaving the ministry. Now, a certain amount of that is simple natural attrition with the baby boomer generation now hitting their retirement years. So some of that would normally happen. And on the other end of things, we don't have as many younger folk coming into the ministry. So there's already sort of a decreased number of clergy who are available for serving churches. But in addition to that, in 2022, it was noted that somewhere between 48 and 52 percent of clergy had seriously considered leaving the ministry within the last year. And so there's been a lot of looking at why that is. And a lot of it just has to do with what's going on in our culture in general. There's a lot more divisiveness. I was reading an article just this morning about the change in forgiveness, that we don't seem to be as good as a culture in forgiving. And so these things that are happening in the culture in a macrocosm come into our congregations in a microcosm. And so our pastors are working with congregations who are in many cases divided, in many cases allowing political difference of beliefs and other things to impact their family their community in that church. And the pastor bears the brunt of this because they are bearing those difficulties on their own shoulders for their own ideas, but then also carrying the burdens of those in their congregation as well. So it's almost a double burden. And unfortunately, I have often heard of situations in which congregation members allow their political stances and such to impact how they're treating their pastor as well. If that person disagrees with them or says something they don't agree with, they they really react in much more extreme ways than what we used to see 10, 15 years ago. So again, what we're seeing out there is happening in here as well. And so I do think pastors right now really need a little extra love and support as they are trying to give members of their congregation a little extra love and support. If you don't get something together by October 31st, these things would be beneficial. But as you work, whether it's with your congregations or with your colleagues that do regional ministry, are there some really good, unique, creative ideas of what would be beneficial that pastors, or for that matter, pastors and their families, what are some good techniques or some nice methods of showing that appreciation that would really make a difference for for these clergy? I'm not sure I've seen anything particularly unique, but I do want to lift up a few things that we may discount as not being all that exciting. I think the beauty of a handwritten note or card goes far. Uh, We are a world of email and text messages, and 
I have to say, I'm sitting here as we're talking, looking at a card I actually got for Clergy Appreciation Month, and I rarely get them. As a judicatory official, people don't tend to, to put me in that same category. And I got a card from a group of people at one of our congregations that I had worked with, and they each hand signed the card and sent it to me. And just receiving that card with with signatures on it meant so much to me. I love, you know, it's very nice to get an email that says, hey, loved what you did. Thank you so much. But the beauty of handwriting is something that is becoming lost and it feels so much more personal. And it means they took more time to write it, especially in this case, a group of people all signed it and put it in the mail to me. And so it's very nice to get an email that says, hey, loved what you did. Thank you so much. But I don't want to discount the beauty of sending a card, and it feels so much more personal, and it means they took more time. I also want to highlight things like being there in person. I was recently, last Sunday, in fact, got to attend a church celebrating an anniversary, and they had a guest preacher there from another congregation. And there was a significant number of members of that pastor's other church who had come to the celebration, partly to join in the celebration for the church, but also partly simply to support their pastor by their physical presence in that pew. And again, I think this is something that we took for granted before, but now we're living in a Zoom world and people are Zooming into worship more. And I've heard pastors talk about it's difficult to have the same energy around worship when people are not physically present. And so I would put a call out, not only during Pastor Appreciation Month, but but year round to consider, you may not feel like you need to be in church and worship, but maybe other people would like to have you there as your support to be present and part of that community. And also year round, just basic things like pastoral compensation, family leave acts, making sure you're taking care of your pastor in very concrete ways also shows them appreciation, how much the little things matter. And a compensation package obviously isn't a little thing, but we tend to, once the pastor comes to the church and the compensation is taken care of, it just gets rolled over year after year after year in the budget, and we don't really think about it. We need to be looking at, are we compensating our pastors? Are we helping them live without having to worry about where their next meal is going to come from and how they're paying for groceries and so forth? This is, by the way, where your judicatory officials can be very helpful if you are part of a denomination. Um, And if you're not part of a denomination, most of us would be more than happy to provide you with some resources to help you in your congregation's own addressing pastoral compensation packages and such. We'll help anybody. My last question for Sandy Hasenauer, who leads about 50 congregations of the American Baptist Church Network in Rochester and the Genesee region, the little things that you do, the way we treat pastors, elders, Sunday school teachers, anybody who has a leadership role, if anybody should get it right, it really ought to be the church folks. But what are the things that people in church really ought to be attentive to so that we don't let the little church fights become big or we put unrealistic expectations on our pastors or pastor's spouses or kids? Any nudgings you would have for us to help us make it easier for those who stand in front of us at worship and who are sitting beside us at hospital rooms? Oh, compassion. Compassion is a big word, and what it really means is trying to understand how what you are doing may be having an impact upon the other and trying to understand their perspective. You know, if I go into a church worship service and they're singing a style of music I don't love, I I'm going to sing along anyway, because I know there are other people in that congregation that that is exactly the tune they needed to sing that morning. And so it matters less whether that's the tune I wanted to sing that morning. That's a very minor example, although it has led to big conflicts (laughs) in churches at times. We need to step outside of ourselves and outside of our own needs and our own perspectives and do everything we can to understand things from the other person's point of view. Thank you for sharing these suggestions and 
Also, thank you for being a pastor to so many pastors in your region. Sandy Hasenauer is executive minister of the ABC Churches in the Rochester region. I'm Greg Gillespie. This is Family Life News. <music>